Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. A high court judge in Trinidad and Tobago who is also a lay preacher calls for a roadmap to improve race relations. This story takes the lead in our 932nd edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 1st September 2020. Details after this important message. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Welcome back. High Court Judge Justice Frank C. Persad, in a sermon streamed live to the Presbyterian community from the St. Andrews Theological College in San Fernando, called for consideration to be given to the formation of a roadmap for the improvement of race relations and reconciliation, similar to government's roadmap to economic recovery. He said it is sad that after 58 years, Trinidad and Tobago is still dangerously divided along ethnic lines. Nisha John Mohammed of TV6 News has more in this report. Our people are divided and we cannot pretend that the rhetoric and the divisiveness which manifested itself is only related to election rhetoric. We have a problem and we must address it. High Court Judge Frank C. Passard, who is also a lay preacher, said, For far too long, Trinidad and Tobago has struggled with race relations, and it's time to address the root societal causes for race bashing and discrimination. On a national level, he is proposing that the country revisits its concept of citizenship and national identity. The conversation has to be diverted away from a discussion about who is more racial than whom, and deliberations and a clear decision has to be taken as to how we move forward as one people. He is also recommending that a bipartisan committee be appointed to establish a roadmap for the improvement of race relations and reconciliation in the country. Pressure groups should advocate strongly for the enactment of legislation to regulate hate speech. And legislation should also be enacted to ensure that there is a fair and equitable distribution of our nation's abundant resources. Education, he argues, must also be revolutionized and prioritized if the country is to move forward on this issue. On an individual level, far too many of us have within the confines of our homes taught our children to discriminate or dislike simply because others are of a different ancestral heritage. Instead, we should be engendering in them tolerance, respect, and an appreciation that our rich diversity is in fact our most prized asset. He warned, however, that a house divided cannot prosper, and this path of divisiveness and discord cannot be allowed to continue. Divide and rule has been the mantra, but this cannot and ought not to continue. We simply cannot build a society where we are divided. Sipasad said this land has limitless potential and urged the citizens to allow grace relations to regulate race relations this independence. Nisha John Mohammed. TV6 News. 
There is a call from the opposition leader of Trinidad and Tobago for a new round of talks between the government and the opposition on the national response to COVID-19. TV6's Jewel Brown reports. Opposition leader Kamla Prasad Basesa says the opposition is very concerned that the government has, quote, not yet embarked on a long overdue aggressive nationwide COVID-19 testing policy, end quote. In a statement on Sunday, Mrs. Prasad Basesa called on the government to, quote, immediately embark on renewed urgent national consultations with the opposition and other critical business, labor, and social sector stakeholders, end quote. The opposition leader said such talks would assist in ensuring that there is what she called a proper and workable national plan in place to deal with the harmful medical, economic, and social fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. On March 20th, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley did meet with opposition leader Prasad Basesa along with their respective delegations to hold bipartisan talks on how best to tackle the COVID-19 crisis. That bipartisan approach, however, did not last very long. As the mandatory wearing of face masks in public is set to take legal effect on Monday, on Sunday the opposition leader said apart from that measure, the government is, in her words, worryingly continuing its dangerous trend of failing to adequately respond to this deadly pandemic in an effective, timely manner. The government, led by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, has accused the opposition of being irresponsible in some of its statements and how it also conducted some of its interactions with the public during the general election campaign, which occurred during the pandemic. In her statement, Mrs. Prasad Basesa repeated the opposition's, quote, long-standing mantra for government to immediately procure rapid testing kits, end quote, so as to get a real idea of the levels of community spread. The opposition leader also recommended the establishment of what she called the COVID-19 intelligence, where all national security agencies will communicate and execute strategic plans and operations in unison, the deployment of teams of health officers to ensure COVID-19 regulations compliance by businesses and the general public, urgently secure 100,000 rapid tests, enough to test about 10% of the population, and which will give results within 30 minutes, and also the stocking up of suitable amounts of PPE for frontline medical workers, as well as more beds, ventilators, and other medical equipment, which she says must be made available for expected increases that will come with the ramped up testing. Recently, the health minister said there is no shortage of PPE for frontline medical workers. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The Antiguan Barbuda Defense Force is celebrating 39 years of contributing to the development of Antigua and Barbuda. A church service was held to mark the occasion. ABS's Jessica Russell was there and reports. There were musical selections as the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force celebrated its 39th anniversary with a service at Camp Blizzard. The head of state, what Governor General His Excellency Sir Ronnie Williams, and Prime Minister Gasson Brown were in attendance. Chief of Defense Staff Colonel Talbert Benjamin also represented his troops at the brief ceremony. Reverend Pauline Ramsey Burns of the Anglican Church delivered the message. Allow lack of education, lack of money, a lack of skill or any other thing to stop you from being anything or everything God wants you to be. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Financial analyst in Jamaica, Dennis Chung, says the worsened revised growth forecast for Jamaica for this financial year has not come as a surprise. TVJ's Ocean Masters has more. On Wednesday, the Bank of Jamaica projected that the economy will contract by between 7 and 10 percent during the 2020-2021 fiscal year as a result of the impact of a COVID-19 pandemic. The BOJ had predicted a decline of 4 to 7 percent earlier this year. Now speaking on Thursday on the Morning Agenda program, Financial analyst Dennis Chong said in April he predicted that the economy would have declined between 7.5% to 20%. He is questioning the accuracy of some of the BOJ's main reasons for the revised growth forecast. The main reason for the decline is going to be tourism, which is obvious, and the unemployment. Right? So um, if, if, if we actually had responded differently in some respects, 
who could have saved down that unemployment downturn. But you know, responded differently how? Um, well, I have never thought that the response to it sustainably was going to be that you know you need to go into um, you know so much of a, a lockdown mode. For example, Saint Catherine. I mean, the locking down of Saint Catherine, I think, was the Achilles heel in the, the economic outturn. He says enforcement of measures in Jamaica and across the world instead of lockdowns would have been more effective in managing the spread of the virus. BOJ Governor Richard Biles told yesterday's quarterly media briefing that the worsened outlook is largely associated with the virus's resurgence in major trading partner countries such as the United States and updated assessments of the impact of the crisis on some local sectors. Mr. Baez says partial economic recovery is expected to commence in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Millions of U.S. dollars are presently unaccounted for following an investigation into an alleged fraudulent operation that has been going on in the east coast of Demerara. Kendall Richmond of HGP Nightly News reports. In his opening statement at a press briefing on August 22, the Attorney General Anil Nandla revealed that investigations are ongoing into an alleged fraudulent operation on the East Coast, which is now a matter of national importance. The Attorney General stated that he was aware of this situation before. However, since assuming office, the complaints from citizens have increased. As such, he wishes to inform the public that the people affected are the government's priority. The government of Guyana wishes to assure that our main priority is to ensure that if this scheme is unlawful, and from all indications it is unlawful, that our main priority is to ensure that the persons who have put money in this scheme are reimbursed. He went on to say that no license was granted to the individual who he has described as a Cuban national and that the previous government is cognizant to that fact. Under the previous government, the, both the Bank of Guyana and the Guyana Securities Council informed the various ministers of this scheme operating without a license and they received no response. Nandlal relayed that upon all indications, millions of U.S. dollars were invested into this scheme and that money is now unaccounted for. Investigators don't know where the monies are because that it's not in a bank account. There is no bank account in Guyana, although the gentleman claims that he has several bank accounts in the commercial banks. And not, nothing can be found in any of the commercial banks. The Attorney General is calling on persons who have invested their money into this scheme to come forward and assist the police with their investigation. He also stated that a database will be built to document the information of those persons who have invested money and the amount invested so that they can be reimbursed if possible. For the AGP Nightly News, Kendall Richmond. <music> I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.